challenging when we make it about the food. It's challenging when we make it about the food. But see, the food and the struggle with food, okay, during this period of fasting, is a tool and a gateway into something deeper, okay? What we do from a food standpoint with fasting is a tool and a gateway into something deeper, okay? But it's only if you give it the appropriate time and, the, and have the right perspective do you begin to use it as a tool to open up the door into something deeper, okay? So we're using something physical in order to reach something deeper, something spiritual, all right? But in order to use a spiritual tool the right way, okay, a physical tool the right way, it needs appropriate time, it needs appropriate perspective. All right? So it's common that in our faith we use something physical to reach something deeper. I want you to hold on to that thought. thought. We use something physical. God uses something physical that we do in order to reach something deeper. Now let's jump to our gospel, Samaritan woman. All right? Jesus coming, going to Galilee, makes a detour, comes through Samaria. His disciples go out because it's the middle of the day, hottest part of the day, in the middle of the desert. He finds a little bit of shade by this well, and as his disciples go, the Samaritan woman comes. Alright? What is their initial conversation about? Their initial conversation, okay, and this happens two times in this gospel, alright? The initial conversation that they have is about something physical. The initial conversation that Jesus has with the Samaritan woman is about something physical and is about getting water, which is something that we need, okay? But it's a physical conversation. Okay, they go back and forth. He's like, give me something to drink. How are you going to talk to me, a Samaritan woman? All right, you don't have a pail, so clearly I'm your only answer. All right, so it's a little back and forth about something physical. But what does Jesus use, or what does he do in the process of this conversation? He takes something physical, and then he turns it into something spiritual. He's taking something physical, and then he turns it into something spiritual when he says, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask him for water, and he would give you life-giving water, which you would take, and in you would become a spring of living water. Okay? He took a physical thing that they were doing, and then in the middle of the conversation, because she hung in there, okay, he turned it into something spiritual. Now this is like a key point because the Samaritan woman kind of has like, she can, she can come to like some conclusions. She can be like, I have no idea what this gentleman is talking about. I'm going to get my water and go back. All of a sudden, I came here to get water. He wants to talk to me about like, water and he's a Jew, I'm a Samaritan. We don't really get along. He's turning the conversation into something that I don't really understand. I'm just going to get my water and go. I have enough problems in life, which we knew she does. Why get into this problem? Samaritan woman talking with a Jew, Jewish man. But she hung in there. She hung in there and she followed him where he was going. Key point for the Samaritan woman was when Jesus said, But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. She responds, Sir, give me this water that I may not thirst, nor come here to draw. All right, Her coming there to the well in the middle of the heat of day was a sign of the horrible life that she lived. Because everybody traditionally would go early in the morning. It was the coolest part of the day. You get your water for the day, then you go back to town. But because of the lifestyle that she lived, the choices she made in life of having five different husbands and the reputation that brought her, now to avoid the crowds, avoid the trouble, she comes in the middle of the day. All of a sudden, she picks up on what Jesus is saying. He says, okay, you're talking about not thirsting again. Right now, I'm coming to this well because my, my life, I am thirsting for something. I can't find it anywhere. 
and all of a sudden you're, you're starting to hit kind of the chords that I, want, I need to hear in life. She follows him. She says, okay, well, I'm tired of coming here. I'm tired of this physical action of coming in the middle of the day because I know that this physical action of coming in the middle of the day is a representation of a much deeper personal thirst. Her physical action of going to the well in the middle of the day was an outward manifestation of a much deeper spiritual thirst. And our Lord found that thirst, okay, but his, his gateway in was that physical act of drawing water. But it never stayed just the simple physical act of drawing water. He used a physical thing as a gateway and a tool into the, spirit, the deeper spiritual thirst. Okay? That was our first conversation. Same mindset now with the disciples. Okay? And the Samaritan woman put the disciples to shame. Disciples came back, all of a sudden see this conversation, and say, wait a second, why is he talking to this woman? And then after the woman leaves, Okay, the disciples sit down and they're saying, Rabbi, eat, teacher, eat. We went to the town, got the food, here's the food, eat. He said, I'm not hungry. I'm like, wait a second. Peter, did you give him food? John, did you give him food? James, do you run back faster? They started asking him, who gave him food? And he's like, you know what? The food, my food, is to do the will of the Father. And the disciples are like, what's he talking about? He said, go get food. We went, we got food, we came back. Why can't it just be simple, Jesus? It's never simple. Well, it's never, I don't want to say it's never simple, but it's never face value. It's never face value. And so what our Lord was trying to do with his disciples is say, look, there's a greater food in life. The greater food in life, the greater filling that comes in life is not by what we put in, but by who we serve. And he was trying to tell them that the greatest food that we can have comes when we look out into the fields and realize that they're like this woman, are millions of people hurting and hungry, not physically, although there are some physically, but the deeper spiritual hunger and deeper spiritual thirst, there's millions of people out there. And the harvest is ready. There's no need to wait for four months till the harvest really physically comes with our eyes. He said, look into the hearts of people and you will see that there is a spiritual harvest that is ready right now. But can we stop physically just feeding ourselves? And can we change our eyes to, instead of just seeing the physical world, begin to see the deeper spiritual world? So here, let's kind of put the three that we just talked about. Opened up, said week four fasting. Fasting is going to get a little challenging. We're running out of good recipes. All right? But our Lord, through the guidelines of fasting, is trying to reach into something deeper and more spiritual. With the Samaritan woman, it first started off with a conversation of how are we going to get this water. Jesus said, it's not about the water, it's about the deeper spiritual thirst. Samaritan woman caught on to the conversation, followed our Lord in the steps that he was leading her, and in the end, was spiritually satisfied. <coughs> our disciples came back from getting food, said, Rabbi, eat. He said, I already ate because I did the will of the Father. And there is so much food out there that I don't need this food. Disciples scratch their heads. So I, don't, I don't understand what he's talking about. Where are you in this parable? Where am I in this parable? All of us have some physical circumstance in life. Difficult, challenging, keeps you up at night. A difficult physical circumstance. It could be a relational circumstance. But our Lord today says, wait, can you have bigger eyes? Can you have eyes that peer deeper into the soul of a man? Into your own soul? 
and realize that it's not just about the physical circumstance you are in, but it's about the deeper spiritual need that God is trying to touch in your life. Could be a difficult boss. Could be a tough relationship with a spouse or your child, or the child to the parent. Could be family issues. But what it, whatever it is, and you pick your own, I, I pick my own, okay? Can you identify it and say that it's not just about the problem? It's not just about the issue. Because underneath the issue, there is a deep spiritual thirst that you have that God is trying to touch through the physical circumstance you have. There is a deeper spiritual thirst and yearning for Him that God is trying to touch through your own unique and my unique physical circumstance. But today we're challenged, can you see it? Maybe you haven't looked at it in that way. Maybe it's just always been the annoying problem that I, in my mind, I say, everybody's got problems, this is mine, come on problem, let's walk through life. It's kind of a lame answer to be honest, to just say, okay problem, come with me, let's just walk through life, I'll deal with it, and when something explodes, we'll just, we'll figure it out. It's not what God is doing with our lives. It's not why He deals us the cards that He deals us. Because inside he knows there's something unique that needs to be touched in you, something unique that needs to be touched in you. But we need to stop having these superficial eyes for just face value problems. And start to see that through our face value problems, there's something deeper God wants to touch. And out of that deeper issue, that's when the fountain of life comes alive in you. It comes alive in me. That's how it comes. But well, we gotta see it first. And glory be to God forever.